this is setting up two-way sync without a row aligned ID, or in other words, with an ID that is not row aligned. Previously, we had this sheet set up and on the Mary tab, I could change, oh, let's drop this science down to a uh, six. And it'll override that. And that worked really well because the IDs had a mathematical one-to-one -one relationship with the row. So it made it really easy to find. This time, these are the IDs I'm working with. H0005 and S0009 have nothing to do with the rows that they're on. And this tends to match real world data more directly. So I still have the same script set up. This is a copy of the previous one we did. So still the exact same script and I just wanna show what happens if I try to run this. Currently there should be no executions. Let's come back to Mary and same thing, drop this down to a six. Totally failed. Didn't do anything. <laughs> Let's go check this out. So, cannot convert J0008 to int. Makes sense. And where is it finding that sync with row 15, 6? Yeah, so it's saying right here it just can't it can't do this right it can't say this is the ID it can find the ID but then it can't do anything about the row okay so it actually did everything else right it deleted what was there or what I put in so let's do that one more time it deleted it but it didn't override it we obviously wanted to override so I'm gonna make a new function here sync non row And a lot of this is actually going to be the same. All of this is going to be the same. We still want the source, the range. We're still looking at the same type of edit that's going to be valid. And the ID is still column A of that row. That's all the same. Now, though, I need to go get the database. So let's call my constant database spreadsheet app dot get active and get sheet by name. The name I'm using is database. Then const IDs database.get range and I want basically this entire range. So in this case I'm actually just going to do a through a dot get values. For the time being, let's just show what that gives out. So let's log the IDs. Here, let's change from sync with row to sync non row, still passing E. So now when I edit something, it's going to run sync non row. And I'm going to be looking in the execution log for the list of IDs. Once again, let's go back to Mary and drop this down to a six. Great, it cleared, it ran the script, All right? Because here it's still clearing out what's there. We're still good there. All right, and now it's giving me all the IDs in the two dimensional array that I would expect. That's just fine. Now we want to loop through, let me pull those back up. I want to loop through all of these IDs until I find the ID that we're at. So now I need to loop through those IDs. So that's going to be simply for let I in IDs if, and I do need to go two levels in. So I'm at row I column zero, since it is a two dimensional. If that equals ID actually we don't want a let I what we want is a let row equals zero 
and our for loop is going to use row. Row is less than ids.length, row plus plus. So increment through, move through the entire ids, and as we do, increment this row variable. So if the ID we're looking at matches the ID we want to be looking for, break. And we don't even need a second parenthesis there because we're just going to break out. And to show that, let's log row. Change this to an 8. Failed. I is not defined because I wrote it with I and then changed it to row. So I edit that again to force the script to run. That one completed. Row three. And we edited right here. All right, so let's do that one more time. Let's do it here. Actually, what's really important, what we're looking for is this Jesenia. So let's drop this to a seven. Wait for that run. So Jesenia is returning row three back on the database Jesenia is row four. Arrays are zero indexed, so it's zero, one, two, three. So it found the correct location. That's awesome. So row is correct. Now let's copy this. Bring it back up. So let's get the DB row. And here I actually want to do plus one. Or alternatively, we could do row plus plus right here. Let's do that. Because again, it's zero index, right? So Jesenia is in the sheet, row four, in the array, row three. So I need to pop my row one higher. So if it found row three, make that into row four. Then down here on the database, get the range of that row, the column of the edit, and set the value to whatever our value was. Let's go try it. Jesenia, let's make that a seven. Deletes, and there it is, overrode with the seven. Okay, let's cheat it better this time, bring that up to an eight. Perfect. And let's make sure that's working on John as well. Sebastian did a lot better this time, got a seven. Perfect, brought that up to a seven. So the difference that we're doing here, I can get rid of this log. Instead of simply saying that the row equals the ID plus one, now we're making the row zero to use as our incrementation variable through the IDs. We're getting all of the IDs Looping through those IDs, when the ID we're looking at matches the ID we're looking for, stop the loop. Now row is already declared, so we can continue to use that. Increment it one more time, since we need to uh, have that. The array is zero indexed and the sheet is one indexed. And then just like before, get that same range, set the value to the value of the edit we made. Pretty simple, not that different. And the final video I'm going to have on this is how to do a two-way sync when there isn't any ID at all. So that's coming next, but for now, here's how to do sync when the row and the ID have some relationship. Here's how to do sync when the row and the IDs do not have any relationship.